we're back for a panel talk now uh, by Adriana, Reese, Rin, and Austin's going to be moderating. It's on, um, it's something that I'm actually curious to hear too. Uh, it's about how community powers the adoption of open source. Um, it's going to be a 30 minute panel talk. It's I just wanted just a quick word in for panel talks on rejects. We've done very few of them. Uh, I don't even remember if we've actually done one with a proper moderator in built into the panel talk and you know one of us didn't have to moderate ourselves. So this is quite exciting. We have another panel talk uh, after lunch. So yeah, watch out for that one as well. That's, um, yeah, um, can't wait. Take it away. <laughs> well, if you're excited, then imagine how I feel since I got off of a plane at uh, 8 a.m. local time, so. Oh, you're here. <laughs> But I'm here. <laughs> I am here with some of my wonderful friends that I have made through this wonderful thing we call community and open source. Um, see what I did there? This little segue. <laughs> so I am Austin Parker. Uh, I am a developer advocate. I am a community maintainer for the Open Telemetry Project. And today, me and some of my friends are going to talk about how we have brought community together to help grow um, this project, Open Telemetry, from something that was honestly fairly small a couple years ago to now the second highest velocity project in the CNCF behind Kubernetes. So this is a pretty free-form discussion. Um, we're going to start by kind of introducing everyone and talking about you know, who we are, how we came to this project, and then we're going to tell you about kind of one specific case study uh, of a thing that we made called the End User Working Group. And then we have some takeaways for you at the end, where if you are a maintainer of open source project, maybe those will be very useful to you. Without further ado, let's talk about who we are, how we came together. Um, first, I'd like to introduce Reese. Oh, I am first. Well, hi everyone, uh, my name is Reese. I am a developer relations engineer by day at New Relic. Um, and I also work with these lovely people on the um, Open Telemetry End User Working Group. And, and how did you, how how did you, you got... come to oh, yes. Telemetry? Oh, how did I come into yeah, it? Yeah, like how, what was your, how was your first like, interaction with the project or how did you get into it? Or even into observability in general? Oh yeah, so New Relic is um, a data analytics platform and I was hired onto the Open Telemetry team actually. Um, I came there from Technical support, shout out to whoever else has done technical support, um, vital uh, teams to a lot of um, software products. And yeah, I kind of heard about OpenTelemetry, like as a peripheral, I was supporting our proprietary APM agents and it sounded like something really interesting. I'd never worked in open source directly before, so um, it looked like a really interesting challenge and here I am. Now here you are. All right, next up, Adriana. Hey, I'm Adriana Villela, a senior developer advocate at Lightstep by day, boulderer by night, I'm also involved with the Open Telemetry Project. Uh, I'll ask you the same question. How did you, what brought you into open telemetry and observability? Um, so my first foray into observability was uh, my job before current one where I was actually managing an observability team at Two Cows. And I was trying to pivot the team from just managing tools to um, instead focusing on practices. And I wanted um, a way for the teams to uh, be able to instrument their code in a vendor agnostic manner rather than be beholden to a particular vendor. So um, I stumbled upon open telemetry and spent a fair bit of time trying to convince the organization to, uh, to use it and, uh, and to convince like developers to embrace it. So that was, that was my, initial involvement with it. And then when I joined um, Lightstep, I actually got to become a, uh, an open telemetry contributor, which has been really awesome. Cool. Next up, we have Rin. I'm Rin Mancuso. Um, I'm the community manager at Honeycomb IO. Um, I'm on Team USA paraclimbing by night and um, am a karaoke nerd. <laughs> I hear this is a good place to be a karaoke nerd. Um, how did you get involved in open telemetry and observability? Yeah, so before um, 
coming to Honeycomb, I actually was working at New Relic with Reese and um, was on sitting on the marketing team and really excited about trying to work with open telemetry clearly felt like this is, this is the future this is we need to be talking about how well we can interoperate with other vendors because the reality is things are complex and very few um, DevOps teams are using one solution for all of their monitoring, logging, observability needs anymore. Um, and, you know, didn't quite manage to convince the marketing team there, but if, if when I had the chance, I jumped to Honeycomb, which explicitly mentioned this in their job description, and kind of pretty immediately dove into the project, set up by Liz Fong Jones, who was one of the founding members of the project who was there and was ready to step down. Um, I got really involved with the end user working group, which felt like the right place for me to work, and we'll talk a little more about that in a second. Um, I was wondering, how many of you need a definition of open telemetry? Does everybody kind of know what it is? It's not that important to this talk, but. Do you, do you want one? Open telemetry is a, uh, oh gosh, I'm, see this is why you shouldn't do this on two hours of sleep. Open telemetry, no, I actually should know this. It's like, I, I know. Like we might have four different definitions, make, that I, might be a game. I do, I remember it. The goal of open telemetry is to make uh, observability a built-in feature of cloud native applications. It is an instrumentation framework and library, right? So if you're familiar with tool, if you're familiar with StatsD, if you're familiar with Prometheus, if you're familiar with various logging frameworks or um, application performance monitoring, APM tracing frameworks, then the goal of OpenTelemetry is basically to create an open standard for um, creating that data and expressing that data and then being having a vendor agnostic way to kind of ship it off somewhere, right? So instead of being tied into like a particular vendor, one proprietary platform for uh, both instrumentation and analysis of data, now your instrumentation and the data itself is agnostic to uh, where it goes. Um, and we believe as a project that this is really good for you, the end user. And might as well pivot over to myself. Um, <laughs> I am, of course, Austin Parker. I run the developer relations team at Lightstep uh, and <clears throat> I have been involved in open telemetry since the jump, quite literally. Um, I was looking through my Google Drive a little while ago and I found the the document that I sh had put together about this very nasty Twitter fight um, that was directly responsible for the, the rise of open telemetry from all the way back in 2018. So on the project, I am um, a community maintainer, so there is... Uh, both elected and unelected sort of governance positions in open telemetry, and I am one of the unelected ones, so I kind of manage the overall community engagement with the project to make it great for our contributors and end users alike. Um, outside of that, I wrote a book on distributed tracing. Um, I'm the guy that did the Animal Crossing DevOps conference, if you heard of that, and I have a fun hat. <clears throat> so, let's start by... We, we all talked about how we individually got kind of involved in this project and why we, what brought us to observability, but I think to discuss, uh, to really dive into this, we need to understand, you know, what brought us together in the roles that we're in, right? Because in a lot of open source projects, kind of, to, especially large um, cloud native ones, right? Because there's only there's a few decent examples of. What does a cloud native project look like? You obviously have Kubernetes, Prometheus, all these sort of things. But one recurring trend is that for the most part, they tend to be aligned around one single very large contributor, one very large single commercial contributor, right? Um, and this is not, a, I'm not, this is not a value judgment. This is just the way things are. Kubernetes broadly is run by, you know, Red Hat and the IBM, um, and various components and SIGs within Kubernetes are run by effectively large vendors in those spaces. And this isn't, again, it's not a bad thing. Um, this is just the way that, that expertise tends to flow, right? Like there are people 
that know a lot about storage, that work for storage vendors, so obviously they're going to have, be very interested in solving storage problems. Uh, you also see projects like Linkerd or Backstage, you know, where these are very much attached to like one particular commercial interest. Open Telemetry um, came into this with a slightly different portfolio, where Open Telemetry says, well, there's all these different parts of actually instrumenting software systems, and historically, a lot of that has been tied to a particular vendor. Um, so if you're a Datadog user, then you install the Datadog agent, and Datadog has all these integrations they maintain for Spring, or for Go, or for MySQL, or whatever you're using, and you you click on that, and it integrates, and da 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 But then if you wanted to switch to another vendor, um, you would have to replace that instrumentation. And if you were a developer of a framework or a library or some sort of open source product, you had this really challenging problem of how do, you know, my end users want metrics, they want logs, they want traces from my software, but what do I target? If I target Datadog, I am now kind of like writing everyone off that isn't a Datadog user. If I target various open source things, then there's still conversion work that needs to be done. You know, so this is the world that OpenTelemetry was sort of pushed into where there's a lot of options and none of them are great. Meanwhile, there is increasing in volumes of data, increasing need for developers and DevOps and SREs and operators in general to understand these complex systems at scale. So how can we fit into this? Well, we can create open telemetry. We can create a project that standardizes all this stuff and um, gives a standard for developers to actually like plug into, right? So if you're a framework author or a library author, you can just target open telemetry SDK and data model for your telemetry and bada bing, bada boom. So, but this also causes another problem, which is all the expertise on doing those integrations and instrumentations is also all wrapped up in vendors. And vendors are also like extremely, extremely interested in how open telemetry gets made because if they are going, if, you know, if I'm a sales or marketing or a product person, and I'm, you know, someone's like, hey, uh, you should put all of your eggs in terms of data ingest into this project that you don't have any control over. Um, a lot of them look at you like you've grown a third head. <clears throat> So, invariably, OpenTelemetry becomes a place where a lot of different vendors are interacting with each other. And when you have all these different vendors interacting with each other, how do you kind of square the circle, right? How do you make sure that people are actually focused on the project users um, and not you know, just their commercial customers? And this is kind of the question that led to the formation of the end user working group. And, I think, Rin, you have some thoughts about this. Sure, yeah, and I'll add, I'll add to what Austin said that a very real-time example of this is we're talking about sampling right now. So every vendor, if you work in the DevOps space, prices a little differently. Some might price on events, some might price on gigs of ingest, some might price on gigs of storage. And so sampling, deciding what you send to the tool and how long you retain it, has a tremendous influence on vendor pricing. And so the decision we make there could literally cause people to reevaluate their pricing structures. Um, so lots of interests, lots of different vendors, and lots of decisions in the project are like this. Um, but what we figured out that we were missing, um, back in the day, I used to work at a place called Tidelift, which works with individual maintainers. In the individual maintainer space, you talk a lot about incentives not quite being aligned. They're about to do a conference this summer called Uplift about maintain, about maintainers being put in a supply chain perspective, like having to literally fill, worry about security or worry about filling out like your vendor procurement forms and like what's their incentive to do that. They don't have an incentive to do that. Um, at the cloud native level, pretty much everybody is participating on behalf of a company. Their company's paying them, so we don't have the solo maintainer problem of I'm not actually being paid and I've built this thing that's holding up part of the internet, please help. Um, the problem that we have is that the companies that are incentivized are all vendors. And how do we get to the point where we're actually able to take the feedback of end users, 
seriously and give them ways to engage that fit with the amount of time that their company is able to prioritize for this work and that give them meaningful return on their investment like growing in their use of open telemetry. That's how we think about sort of aligning incentives here. And frankly, this is probably a challenge in your cloud native project. It's probably not quite the same as how ours is mapped out, but you've probably got end users who don't really have any particular need to participate right now. So, Reese, you've, you've been involved in the end user working group really kind of almost since the inception, I think. Yeah. Um, can Me you talk a little bit through like how that was put together and sort of what it's, you know, what it does? Yeah, so, you know, at the core of it is what's, well, good as a software project without end users, right? You could write like the best code, most efficient code, but if no one's using it, um, you know, where do you kind of go from there? Like, what's the goal? And so, the um, there was a um, recognition for a need for a group, so the end user working group that we are now all part of, to one create a space that's vendor neutral for our end users, um, one so that they can have this community um, of people that can help them navigate the project, help with adoption implementation questions, um, and then also thinking about it from the other side, which is, hey, this community of end users is a really great way for us to get feedback on the project and feed that back into um, you know, the people that are working and creating the, the, the software to help improve the project and help increase adoption and implementation. And so to that end, we have um, two overarching goals, which I kind of touched on just now, which is to create that vendor neutral space for end users and to create this uh, feedback loop, which is one another challenge that we're kind of working through right now um, as to how to kind of streamline that whole process so that we can make sure that the um, SIG priorities are aligned with user priorities. Um, and uh, we have several activities that I think we're going to go into that we host um, every month. We have a lot of end user resources that we've created and are still working on improving. So we have like a monthly user discussion group, um, Open Telemetry in Practice, which is um, a series of talks, which when I think we'll get into a little bit later, um, as well as Q&A sessions um, to document like interesting use cases and common, common challenges that end users face when they are getting into open telemetry, um, and a couple other, um, I think we have like a private Slack channel, and oh, what am I blinking on right now? I feel like other things that I think we will come to in a minute here. I, th I think there's even a, a link at the end so you can find all this stuff out for yourself. Yes. Um, <laughs> So Adriana, like let's let's talk about some of those so let's talk through some of those activities, right? Like what are the you know, what are you involved in and um, which ones do you want to highlight? So um, one that I think is really worth highlighting is the uh, our end user Q and A sessions. We hold them um, every month, and they're actually lots of fun uh, because we we find folks who are practitioners of open telemetry in the community, so we can hear like stories of how the, it's used out in the wild, and it's basically an interview style uh, session that we hold every month, um, and. I think, yeah, I think we're having one every month except this month. Um, but uh, basically the, the format is, it's an interview style um, and uh, users share like how they're using open telemetry, how they got into open telemetry, what some of their challenges are around open telemetry, how, they're, um, how they brought it into their organization because we do find that a lot of users are, are curious, like how is it that you are using it? How did you convince folks in your companies to bring open telemetry in? Um, and then another thing that's super important from these Q&A sessions is we take user feedback. We want to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like, what has worked for you, but what are some of the things that are super challenging for you in terms of using open telemetry? And um, the whole point of, of that is to be able to bring, um, bring that feedback back to uh, the maintainers of the various SIGs so that they can help to improve the, the project. Um, 
I think there was a couple more. Do you want to go, Ren? Oh, yeah, open telemetry in practice. I think. Yeah, so I run the open telemetry in practice series, which is um, the. There were, we were trying to solve a couple problems with this. One is that there's no good place to go for <laughs> intermediate to advanced open telemetry education. Um, at conferences, usually because it's a broad audience, folks are giving pretty broad, um, you know, introductory level talks. What is open telemetry? Because it's only a three-year-old project. Maybe if you're lucky, sampling 101 in open telemetry. So part of this was the desire to be able to create spaces where we could go and talk about implementing open telemetry in specific languages. The second thing was to create a speaking opportunity for end users. So the way we've created this is generally we have one person who gives a hands-on code tutorial. A lot of times that is a DevRel because, from one of the vendors because that tends to require a lot of time and prep. Um, sometimes it's actually been an end user, but... Um, and then we have an end user come in and do a conversation with them on like, how am I actually implementing this in my company? So maybe you see the DevRel do a demo of, here's some of the basics of how to implement in .NET and some of the considerations I might have in like how I'm gonna set up my architecture to support this. And um, then the end user comes in and is like, well, okay, this is how I'm actually doing it in my system. These are some of the hiccups and challenges I've, I've encountered. And then we kind of open it up to a discussion with the two of them and with everyone else. And if there's an audience there who is already actively implementing in that language, we kind of do polls and questions to kind of hear from them as well. Um, and this is monthly. It's a ton of work and we might shift to a less frequent format. Um, but it's been really great as sort of a flagship to, I think, pull people into the end user working group and make them aware that this exists and is a place that they can come and give feedback. Yeah. Reese, you should talk about the discussion groups and the feedback. Um, I'd also want to point out, though, it's like one interesting compare and contrast is that if you look at like how this is normally done, is a lot of times. Um, you know, you'll get published case studies, right? Where mm -hmm. like Kubernetes is a good example of this. I think I was when Kubernetes graduated. I think there was like 35 case studies from actual you know production users. And what we're doing, I mean, it's it's yeah, it is a case study, but it's not quite formally documented in the same way, right? And I think there's there are trade-offs here, um, and I think we've experienced a lot of those, right? Where we're doing something that is more, you know, very much focused at the the implementer level versus maybe the buyer, if you could think of it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the rationales, at least I have, is that open telemetry doesn't really need someone to sell it because we actually have this very strong vendor community that is selling it for us, right? Like observability vendors are very motivated in making sure that open telemetry does eat the world. So I don't really need someone to go and say like, oh, you should use this, it's better than blah, 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 blah. The work itself will prove that out. What we need are places for, you know, actual implementers to come together and be like, hey, wow, this thing changes quite frequently and uh, here's how we're dealing with that problem. But anyway, yeah. No, so I think like that's um, um, another kind of good use case for the end user discussion groups, um, which I'm recognizing, you know, there might be some confusion around like the different names. You have like the Q&A, which is more of like an interview slash feedback style session where we talk to just one team at a time from like one specific company. And then we have the end user discussion groups, which are monthly and available in um, the Americas, um, EMEA, which is Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And then also, as of earlier this year, the Asia Pacific region, um, and it's a, just a chance for end users of open telemetry to get together and discuss um, challenges, um, questions that they're facing with implementation and adoption. Um, and we also have a, either a member of the governance committee or um, an, a maintainer come on to provide extra context and insight into questions that um, uh, these end users might have. And we also started making these more discoverable, so um, we used to keep them kind of more private and not recorded, but they are now recorded. We are summarizing these discussions 
um, on the blog, so you can go on to the OpenTelemetry blog at any time and see the summaries for the past few months since we started doing them, um, but we're gonna have them every month so you can kind of see like, okay, what are, what, you know, what are people facing as they're trying to um, use OpenTelemetry and um, how can, you know, these help me with mm -hmm. my journey as well. All right, I wanted to add also like <laughs> these are, it's it's so useful reading the summaries because I, I find like every time I either read the summaries or attend one of these things, I always learn something new yeah, that same. I did not <laughs> know was happening in the world of open telemetry. And I also wanted to add that we also do blog summaries of the OTEL Q&A session. Yes. So. So on that, on that point, let's um, talk about sort of the takeaways from this, right? Obviously, it's hard to get through all of this in 30 minutes, um, but maybe let's just go down the line. Like, what's your one big thing that you want people to take away from this panel? Start with uh, Adriana. Um, I think uh, the one big thing is, uh, I want to make uh, make sure people understand like this is like, we really foster a sense of community. This is something that is open to everyone. We want to hear user feedback. I think like any for any like open source project, having something, having an initiative like this is so helpful, um, both to the folks who are using it and for the folks who are um, involved in, in, in maintaining it. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh man! Player pass. <laughs> Rit, you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the biggest takeaway I have from it is that um, you have to decide at some point in the life of a community who you really want to hear from and who needs to be evangelizing. And in our case, as Austin pointed out. We do not have a problem with vendors evangelizing open telemetry. A lot of them are bought in and doing very well. But like, who trusts your vendor to tell you what you want? Um, so something that was really important for us is not only to get end user feedback for, as Reese talked about, the maintainer community to make the project better and improve our developer ergonomics, but also to get end users out there talking, feeling confident about talking about their use of the technology because they're not doing that naturally. Yeah, no, the, best, the best advertisement is a happy developer. Um, with that said, we unfortunately don't have a lot of time left for Q&A, <laughs> but we are all here uh, most of this week. And if you would like to see what the working group is doing with this QR code, you can also go to the Open Telemetry organization on GitHub, look in the community repo, and you will find links to notes and various other things. We're on the um, CNCF Slack in the Open Telemetry channels. Again, just go looking for us and you'll find us. Um, and if I ha can plug one thing. So if you want to hang out with us and you're yeah. here tomorrow night, then we're doing a little pop <laughs> Well, par par tay tay, um, but yeah, like would love to. If you would want to continue these conversations or learn more about open telemetry, um, feel free to come by yeah. and have a drink on our employers tab. Let me also throw in: we have a workshop with the maintainer circle. Yes, that is at Thursday. 11 a.m. to Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, and and um, right, the, it's not on the CNCF program because it is limited to folks who have a substantial amount of skin in the game with some CNCF project. You don't have to be formally titled maintainer, but um, so if you're interested in actually like grouping up with other CNCF projects and talking about how you can implement this framework of identifying who might not be incentivized to contribute in your own project and creating ways for them to contribute, come hang out with us for an hour then. And if you would like some flashy open telemetry stick, limited edition KubeCon 2023 <laughs> Europe sticker as... It does not stick well to my mask, but it sticks well to everything else. Uh, that means to measure is to know in Dutch, apparently. Thank you, Google Translate. So if you would like some <laughs> one of these, um, please come find me this week uh, or other people in the hotel community. Check out our project booth if you want to learn more about open telemetry and see a demo. Um, that's about all I can really think of. So, yeah, I hope to see you all around. If you'd like to ask us any questions or anything, you can do it after this. And thank you so much for your time, and thank you for having us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.
thanks for the lively panel talk. Um, we probably, okay, we, we can take a question, a quick question, um, if there's any. Just very quickly. Hi, thanks for sharing, it's really interesting. Um, you mentioned you know, happy developers are the great evangelists. Um, what's the secret trick to get you know, end users to share and talk? Because that's something that I think every project always struggles with. You always have like the three or four, they're always everywhere. Like, what do you do to foster more people, especially newcomers, from like, sharing their expertise? I would say there's uh, they're they're always like hiding out somewhere the uh, the enthusiastic end users. So um, I, I I think like the socials really help like social promotion of our of our various things that we have throughout the month. Um, and e even like because you know we all work for vendors like we do have access to to users who are using Open Telemetry. So we do encourage like if we hear about like someone who is super stoked about Open Telemetry. Um, I often like, I'll be like, hey, how about you come and talk to us for the Q&A session or maybe you want to do something for OTEL in practice and that seems to, uh, that, that seems to help like get some people out of the, the woodwork and, and, you know, get them to present their, their stuff out to the world. Yeah. And um, then as other end users see that, then they're like, oh, actually, I, I also have something kind of interesting or, you know, either parallel or... Um, perpendicular to share. Right, that and makes sense. the discussion groups is a place to, an to ask questions. That is super easy for you to implement. You just kind of need to hold the space. Um, it's not a lot of prep, and the discussion, you, we hook them by saying, we're gonna answer your questions, but pretty soon we find out a lot about their setup and who might be excited to talk, and it becomes a little circle, and soon those people are on open telemetry and practice giving formal stuff. Yeah, and there's always someone in the end user discussions who you kind of identify, like they ask a lot of questions and we're like, hey, how about, uh, are you interested in coming and talking about these other things? So that's, that's a really good way to identify yeah. people as well. And from my perspective, yeah. the real goal is just get people to become, you know, advocates in their own right, right? Like I, like I think the work, and I, I want to be like clear, they, the, I, most of the work that is, is actually all them, right? I'm just up here to look pretty. Um, <laughs> but as a community maintainer, you know, my goal is how can we take people that are coming into these end user sessions and have them Build and build confidence so that they can go to their communities and that they can go into their localities or whatever and they can start doing this sort of stuff and they can become evangelists for the project as well because that's the only way that it's going to actually work, right? People trust other people. Um, they don't trust, you know, banner ads. Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll be around if you want to continue talking with us, but, but so again, thank you for your time. Thanks, thank guys. You. That's all. Yeah.